Okay, so today, well, this weekend, uh, we're going to flatten the bench finally. It's been a while. Uh, I flattened it a long time ago, probably six or so, five or six years ago. Um, and I used plywood and a sled, very similar to what I'm going to do next, this time, except when I did the first one, I went across this way. And it took forever to get the surface from uh, having little lines going this way. <clears throat> so this time, this jig that I've built, which I'll show you in detail, <clears throat> has, a, has, a, has a set of runners that let me go the long direction. And I'm only going to take a very little bit off, but uh, just to get through all the grime from all the metalworking and all that stuff that I've done on this and shouldn't have, including for this jig. So I'll, uh, I'll come in detail and show you, I'll zoom in and show you the, the sled that I've got that I'm working with, that I built yesterday and today. Um, and then uh, we'll just zoom out and show you the whole process. It's been, uh, it's been a little while. When I get done with that, I'll chamfer my holes here, my dog holes, just slightly. So we'll uh, take a look at the next thing. Um, I'm going to show you the, the sled and then we'll show you the, the actual flattening happening. All right. Alright, so to begin with, we've just put some angle iron. Um, in fact, it's just screwed to little scraps of ply every th in three places there. And uh, down there. And it's literally just number 10 screws, just a pair of them into the angle iron, into the plywood, that's it. And then the C clamps are what hold it onto the table. <clears throat> Alright, so there's rails that we're running on, which I just showed. Uh, and then these, this sled is where the router will mount. And uh, what I've got on here, it's basically a T-square fence. There's UHMW here, and there's UHMW here. And then on the on the far end down here, there's some just on the top. There's nothing on the back side. It's actually loose. I can, I can slide it. So the whole point of it is to push against this area here and drag the router along this length. Assuming this edge and this edge are straight and fairly parallel with that edge, we should get a pretty flat bench out of it. Um, I'll show you the next thing I'll show you is the router. Well, so what it really is, I'll just flip it over, is you've got this UHMW on these edges. They're the running. And it's pretty basic. It's just a little bit of angle iron and a one inch square tube. Nothing fancy. Um, in fact, the less, less fancy the better because I didn't want to spend a bunch of effort on something I'm not going to use that much, something I don't want to have to store too badly. Um, this should get pretty compact. It's just regular old angle iron and a little bit of boxed. Uh, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you with the router on it next. So what you've got is the square tube of this rail, in fact it's this square tube, will run right in here, right through this area. And this screw will push it against this and this point to lock the router so it can't slide along this. Because the way I had done it the first time, you would, well, the way I'd originally done the bench, flattened the bench the first time, instead of running lengthwise with the grain, I ran cross grain, and it was literally just the router sliding across like this here, sliding across like this here. And it left, you know, because it wasn't perfectly square and you know, it was it left cross grain lines that were difficult to get out. So I'm going to try this time, and I haven't done it, so we're going to we're, we're all going to see it live whether it works or not. Um, but I'm going to run the lengthwise. And so in order to run lengthwise, I wanted to make sure the router didn't move around on me, and I've already got my hands full holding onto the sled. So this mechanism locks the router to the sled. Um, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll I will. Uh, Start it here, lock it down, move it over about an inch, lock it down, do a run, lock it over, move it over about an inch, lock it down, do a run, lock it over another inch, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's it's really ugly, but uh, the basic idea is put the square tube through here. This screw pushes against it, pushes against these. This all thread is only here to keep the pressure here from spreading these two arms out. Um, and it's compact so that the other square tube can run right here. 
Um, it'll become abundantly obvious here in a moment. Okay, now, I don't know if it's perfectly obvious here, but you'll see this is that screw pushing against this square tube. This other square tube is supporting the other end of the base. The way the router holds it all kind of down pretty well. And then these arms are just here as a place to lock in. And then when we're ready for the next step, when we run it, we loosen the screw, we slide over a little bit, go again, and we head after it again. If this all works the way I'm hoping it will, I should end up with passes running the length of the grain instead of across the grain, and it should look a little bit smoother. It should be a little easier to clean up. Okay. And then the, uh, the cutter that we've got here is just uh, like it's like an inch and a quarter or an inch and an eighth uh, dishing bit. So it's mostly flat on the top, and then there's slight radius here, and that helps blend one pass into the next so you don't get hard shells. It's the same, uh, same concept as ticking the corners of a hand plane so that when you're making passes on a plane, that the, the passes that overlap, you don't get plane tracks. This is exactly the same kind of thing where you just use this little radius to blend a little bit uh, more so there's not as hard a grip, part of, a, part of an edge there. <clears throat> All right, just to give you an idea of basically the rough idea of the passes that we'll be taking, um, I'm just going to run a drive through and I'll show you the position that it'll take and then uh, that way you don't have to listen to the router when I'm actually doing it for real, but you'll get an idea of what I'm doing. So we got the router in the base on the sled, um, which we've locked the base to the sled in our first pass, so it just barely hangs over the edge of this lip so we get a full, full cut here. Um, so the, the position, the feed is, you grab these, I don't know if you can see that, can you see that handle? can't really see that handle, can you? There we go. So we'll grab this handle with this hand, and that handle with that hand, because that's how you grab handles. And we're going to kind of be pushing that away across the table to sort of keep pressure against this to keep the T-square registered. Um, the bit spins like this, and so when it meets new wood, it's going to pull it that way too, so it should be pretty easy to keep against this fence. Um, and this will be the pass, basically. Grabbing here. Run it across. I don't know how fast I can go. Let me stop here. And that's one pass complete. And then we bring it back. I haven't decided yet. It may or may not work very well um, to move the router at that end of the table for another pass on the return. I suspect, because then it'll be climb cutting, and I suspect that will be bad. Um, we'll try it. We'll see what happens. I have a feeling it's got, not going to go well. Um, then we'll move, and so then the next step is we'll take our screwdriver, loosen this, we'll bump over about an inch, and we'll tighten again, and we're good for another pass. I'll just keep the screwdriver on me the whole time. It's It slides very easy. That UHMW hold keeps things really nice. I'm hoping with the vibration of the router, things are not going to be a problem. I think they're going to be go pretty smoothly. So let's uh, let's hook up the power. I got to route the cord nicely, um, and then uh, get to it. So I decided after doing a little bit of cable routing and stuff, um, I was going to try to get some dust collection in, but managing that hose, keeping it out of the way of the cutter, as much as the depth that I had to cut to get through the base and all that stuff, it was just going to be a pain in the ass. So I've decided it's just going to be a dusty operation. It's going to be noisy too. So um, I think we're about ready to start though. I've done a few dry, dry passes off camera to uh, make sure the cord doesn't get in the way or get caught, caught up on anything. Um, and so I'm going to put on all my gear safety glasses, ear protection, and a mask, and uh, we're going to get going. I hope it won't be too uh, uh, dusty for you guys to see what's going on while I do it, and uh, let's get after it.
after uh, that pass. Not bad. Um, it didn't quite get this far edge. There's a little tiny bit of a lip, but I can take care of that with a spoke shave or a plane real fast. I did skip just a tad bit on this part of the vice jaw and that edge of the vice jaw, but it's it's a sliver and I think it's fine. I'm, I'm going to leave it. Overall, it worked very well. I did note that after a little but I started to notice the router would tip a little like I think it was a vibration thing or it was the pressure and the shape of the little clamping thing that I made. Um, ultimately wasn't a terrible problem to deal with. It uh, overall went pretty smoothly. Um, there's a couple of little teeny plane tracks in here but I can get that with a scraper. Um, Overall, I would say I am very pleased. It's better than the first time I flattened it. So I'll uh, try to get in some detail shots if we can here. So here we go. A little detail shot-ish. Try not to be too shaky for you here. Try to walk in and see. So here's some of the miss. Here's what I was dealing with the last time. It's this cross-grain sort of ridges. So every time it went across grain, it was a little bit ridgy. They're barely feelable. You can hardly feel that they are there. There's one that's a little thick. This one and this one I can hardly even tell is there. So it's just it's a little bit of smoothing. Um, and then we're going to take a, a scraper and catch this little edge. It's a little sharp right here because it just barely got over too far enough. Um, but over and all, you can see pretty clean. Looks pretty good, I think. Um, the jig worked really well. I don't know if you can see that little fillet there. Fillet? I guess it's a fillet. But overall, I'd say it came out looking pretty dang good. Jig, successful. And it'll store very nicely because it's fairly compact. So. Pretty cool, I would think. Alright, so the next thing is just to chamfer the... Uh, the holes here just chamfer these off a bit so that the they're not so quite so sharp um, and then uh, probably put an oil on it maybe maybe just wax I may just wax it this time I, I put a thin down coat of poly on it last time and I didn't like that so anywho this is the uh, bench flattened went pretty quick and uh, thanks for watching tune in next time